Hey everyone, my name is Daniel, and in today's video, we'll take a look at Power App's new data experience. So this feature is currently in preview, but it's very important for you to take a look at it because it truly takes the creation of not just the Canvas apps, but also the backend Dataverse model at the next level. And to really show you as a comparison, I'll show you what the current Copilot does. Yes, it goes ahead and creates a Canvas app for you. Yes, it goes ahead and creates a Dataverse. But after I've shown you that existing feature, when I show you what this new enhancement can do, it will really blow your mind. So stick around, this is pretty awesome. But first, here's my intro video. So let's start with a demonstration of how the existing Copilot Studio works for Power Apps Canvas app. So here I am in my Power Apps, and over here in the Copilot, I'm gonna go and use this prompt. I'll say an app to submit a request for a new coffee machine. I'll go and click on enter, and now it comes to this stage where the Copilot is going to help us create a table for our app. The A means it only creates one table. And it has already done a really good job just by that prompt. It's already understanding that this is a request for a coffee machine. Um, so it's giving us some columns, it's going and giving us some data. This is basically what the Copilot does for us at this stage. Also, I can go and manipulate this however I want by asking the Copilot on the right side and also using some suggestions I have on the left. But for this demo, I'm gonna leave it as is and I'm gonna to come to the bottom right and click on create an app. Now, Copilot is going to the next section where it's actually coming in into the Canvas App Studio and it is building a Canvas app for us from scratch. We're not doing anything. It's going ahead and loading right now inside the studio and here we go, the app also is loading. Now there's some important things that I want you to notice right over here. See, when the app loaded, and I'm gonna go and skip this welcome, come to your left, and over here you see what? you see one screen, you see one screen, and if I come on the left on the data place, you see one Dataverse table. So you kind of understand that there's one Dataverse table, therefore there is also seems to be one app. At least that's what I'm seeing the relationship. For one table, there is one screen. So keep this in mind because now we are going to switch over and test the new data experience, and you will firsthand see how all of this fantastic functionality goes up to a whole new level. So in a different environment, I'm gonna come and turn on this new data experience. It's a toggle switch on the top right. But before I do that, I want you to read this text. It says, this feature uses generative AI. Now watch how that text changes. I go and toggle this on and it immediately says, this feature is in preview and uses generative AI. So I want you to take two things from here. One of them is this is in preview and yes, this also uses generative AI. So let's move forward because in over here for the Copilot, I'm gonna use the exact same prompt which we just did. And the prompt is an app to submit a request for a new coffee machine. And so now when I click on go, you see this whole thing changes. And yes, good data makes sense, great apps, got it, I'm good. But see, this is very different from what we just saw a few minutes ago. The few minutes ago was taking us to a section where we was only gonna build a table. But now over here, we are in a completely different design phase. We haven't even reached to the Copilot's do studio yet. We are right now in the new tables. Tables is plural, which means we can go and create multiple tables. So let's spend a few minutes looking around what's happening over here. First of all, it went and created two tables for us, which is pretty neat. Now for each of the table, you see this ellipsis section, which is few options. When I go and click on it, there's a couple of things I can do. First of all, I can actually see view data. So it also went down and created the additional data for us, very similar to how the first co-pilot phase was. It goes out and creates some columns and it goes and adds some data. If I wanna see the machines, I simply come and click on it and the machine tables also shows up over here. See, it initially had a request over there. When I go and click on it, it changes to request. When I come back over here, it changes to machine. Machine, same situation. It has gone ahead and added some columns, but it also went ahead and added some data. So at least the previous functionality is still here. It's adding the tables and it's going ahead and giving us data. But what I wanna start doing is also put some relationships, because that is the key thing, is going ahead and adding the relationships with the tables before I even get into building the Canvas app. And guess what? You can do that over here as well. 
So for now, I'm gonna go and X out of this one. And it went there and created the machine one for us, but I'm gonna do it a little different. So I'll click on this ellipsis first, and I'll go and click on delete it. The pop-up window comes. Yes, I'll go and delete that. On the top left for the plus new table, I'm gonna click on that, and I'm gonna say from Excel spreadsheet. So I selected that, and I select from the device, and the one I'm gonna use is machines. I'll go and click on it and click on open. And by the way, if any of you are interested, like where is Daniel getting all of this information? This is the exact sample data that you get when you do Power Apps app in the day. So the moment you go and do that, you will be able to get the same information about the coffee machines and everything, all right? Just thought I'd let you know that. But check this out. It is telling us that you've now imported a new set of data for your Dataverse table, and that data originally came from an Excel spreadsheet called machines.xlsx. Pretty neat how in one shot you can get all the information. All right, so I'm gonna click on this ellipsis and I'll go and click on view data and it has gone ahead and pulled all my information over here. So I like what I'm seeing and just to make sure I'm not losing any data if I scroll to the right, nope, everything is here. So this is pretty neat, all right? I'm gonna leave this thing as is uh, and I'll just go and X out of here. But the one thing we need to do is build a relationship. So my request, I am going to now relate this request table to my machines. And the important thing is that this is going to be a many to one. Many means I could have many of the same machine type in this table as rows, but that many machines type always tries to a single machine type in my other table. Make sense? Good. All right, so here we go. You see that circle over there? Click on it, and when you still got the buttons down, go ahead and do a drag and connect it to this other place, and immediately this pop-up window comes up. Now the first thing that wows me is that it automatically, just by viewing the data, knows that, hey, this is a many to one relationship, just like I told you a few seconds ago. So I like what I'm seeing over here. What I'm gonna go and just talk about this is a machines relationship. Uh, the schema name is good, the relationship is good. I'm gonna call that as required, and I'll go and call this as done. This part is actually completed. One more table I'm gonna create with you. Plus two table, I'll go and click on add columns and data, and this comes up over here, right? It calls it as table three, which is correct, this is the third table, but I can go and change the name by clicking on the properties, and this one, I'm gonna call that as machine types, all right? I'm just gonna call it a machine type because the plural name, it automatically goes and does that. All right, so the full of machine types, the data that I'm gonna pull in is something like this. You see this Excel spreadsheet? I've got type ID, name, description, and then the photo, which is image. So the type ID, I'll let Power Apps go and create that on the Dataverse side. But I'm gonna get the name, description, and the photo. All right, so that's basically what I'm gonna do. Uh, so you'll be seeing me doing a lot of copy and paste. Well, the copy part is coming, the data is coming from there. So the first column on this side, I'm gonna go ahead and change that, edit that column, and I'm gonna call this one as the actual name. It's gonna be a single line of text, text required, everything is good, so I'll call that as update. Next, I'm gonna add another column. This one is going to be description. And this description needs to be of a single line of text, but it's gonna be multiple lines, so I'll click on that plain text, it's gonna be required, done, I'm gonna click on save. And then the last new column, I'm gonna call that as image. Um, I will also go and change this over to a multiple line and you'll see why in a minute the URLs are a little bigger and I've got this also as required and I'll go and click on this as save. So this part is good, pretty good. The next thing I'm gonna do is actually add some data over here and I'm gonna add four rows. So let me show you how I'm doing the first one. Uh, I'm gonna pull my Excel spreadsheet back over here and this section, I'm gonna actually click on that, the cell in the Excel spreadsheet, do a control C, and when I come over here, if I double click, the cursor comes up, and I just do a paste. Uh, so I can actually go and get all the other names over here. Double click on that one, highlight that, come over here, double click, paste, go back in. You see what I'm doing. I'm gonna go and get this one as well, come back in, paste that one, and I'll go and put in the last one as well, just so that you can at least see how I went there and completed this entire column. All right, so now that you've seen how I do this, let me just quickly fast forward so you can see the remaining columns also populated. All right, so now I've gone ahead and added all of this data. So the thing we gotta do over here is go ahead and change some of this name. You see that table three, I'm gonna click on the properties once again, and I'm gonna call this as type. I'll keep that, uh, everything else, I'll leave it as is, and I'll go and click on save. So the data is here. 
And this one now needs to have a relationship with the coffee machine inventory. And it's almost gonna be the exact same as we just had with the request and the coffee machine inventory. Because it was a many to one. You see that asterisk and one? The same thing is gonna happen over here. So check this out. Let's do a test first. Let's not make any guesses, let's do a test, all right? So I'm gonna click on this. I'm gonna drag it out and pull it over here. So it connects it. And again, this is also a many to one, just like I expected. So I'm gonna call this as machine type because that's going to be the relationship this will be required um, and i'll just go and call it as done so this part is how we were able to go ahead and now do the data structure of the backend dataverse tables remember multiple tables were added over here and it's pretty awesome but wait there's more the wow factor just doesn't stop over here because what we're going to do now is click on this button which is save and open app and when I click on save and open app, it's gonna double check with me saying, hey, are you done working with as far as creating the table and everything? I said, I'm good. So I'm gonna say save and open app. So now it's saying, thanks, Alan, opening your app and it's gonna take us inside the studio. Now, remember how the first situation was that we went into the Canvas app and it had one screen and it also had one table. And that was what the guesstimate we made is that if there's only one table, there by default seems to be one screen. In this case, we have three tables that we just created. So I suspect that when we come over here, we should at least minimum have three screens. Now I'll tell you one thing, I have noticed that for at least in this preview phase, in this method, the Copilot wizard, which is going ahead and creating the canvas for app, does take a little longer than the first one does. But keep in mind, this is in preview. So once this thing goes GA, which is generally available, this should move a lot faster, I hope. But for now, actually you just have to wait. Awesome, we're in the Copilot Studio. It is loading, which means all the controls and everything should be coming in any second now. Perfect, it looks promising, but my eyes are on the left side over here, on the tree view side. Let's see how many screens come up, all right? And there you go, it has loaded. Well, this is pretty awesome. First of all, I'm seeing a whole different look over here. Trust me when I say that because I've built several apps using the Copilot Studio and I exactly know all of the apps seem to look the exact same way. But this is a breath of fresh air. Also, check this out. On the left side, I am seeing four screens. You and I just made a guesstimate that it should at least be three screens, but hey, there are four screens. But, but before we take a look at the screens, let's take a look at our tables. There you see all the three tables that we created with backend relationships already configured in. All three of those tables are showing up. But let's go take a look at those screens again, all right? So when I come to the screens, I am already guessing that each of these screens is tied to that data table. And just to prove you, here we go. The first one is request screen. So all this screen does is shows you all the requests. Now, if you've used the earlier version of Copilot, you should be very familiar with this one because this was literally the only screen that we used to see built by Copilot. And it is still there. It is there for the requests. Now, if I go to the next one, this is the coffee machines inventory screen. So this is the one that shows us all the coffee machines that we already have in our data. The next one is the machine type. This is the one that goes and shows all the machine types. Remember the four that you and I added manually? This is the one that displaying it over here. And the last one is the welcome screen. So this welcome screen, as the name goes, is there you can go ahead and navigate to all the other screens. It would have been nice if this one had moved all the way up. So let's go and do that right now because that welcome screen needs to be the one on the top. So I've gone and moved that over here. But let's go and finally look at how all this app is working. So I'll go and click on the preview section. We've come over here to the welcome screen. If I go and click on the requests, it directly takes me to the request screen. And here is where I can go and now submitting all my different request types. Um, if I now go back again to the home screen and I want to go see my coffee machine inventory, this is where I should be able to go and see all of my existing coffee machines that I have in my inventory. And then finally, the machine types. When I go and click on the machine types, hey, I'm actually seeing all the four different machine types that you and I manually added. It's already showing up over here. And then you and I can tweak things because for example, this image over here, it's coming in as a URL. Just go and drop in an image control over here and that image control can actually show you the image that is displayed by this URL. So now you see what I'm talking about? This new Copilot functionality with the data experience truly takes the Power Apps Copilot functionality to the next level because you can now create multiple tables with relationships 
and it automatically goes and creates canvas apps with multiple screens and guess what they come by default out of the box responsive with beautiful designs hopefully this video got you excited i highly highly urge you to start playing with it uh, don't go production just yet because it's in preview but definitely start playing with it and get yourself familiar and as always keep using power apps with copilot hello 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 so if you like this video go ahead and click on that subscribe button and smash that like button. Also, if you have a few extra seconds, can you go ahead and put in a comment, either say something nice or give me ideas for my next video. And until then, see ya.